So my topic is going to actually be um, about black holes because I recently read an article um, talking about how we have like our first picture of um, a black hole, like not just what we think it looks like um, or some rendering of it. So I always start in Google. Obviously, what else am I going to use? And I actually like to find sometimes a video on the topic first to, I guess, inspire my information or to direct my research. So, Black Hole Picture 2019, everyone's talking about it. Um, oh, and there's good news articles. I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to find a good video on this. Okay, so even if it is just like a random news video, I like to do that. Um, I know that news sources aren't always the best thing ever, but I don't know. It works to at least inspire what you're going to research. Gosh, advertisements. So, I'll wait for that ad to go. I guess this is my lazy way of <laughs> of getting things started. Okay, so that's definitely not real. So I'm not going to watch that whole video because I don't want to take up my entire 15 minutes. But basically, yeah, I would watch that video. I actually have already watched stuff on it, so that's why I don't necessarily need to do it. But, I don't know, this is really cool. So, next I want to find just more about the significance of the picture itself, like what it means as far as research. Um, I want to find good sources, but honestly, when it's for something that's so recent, like a news article, it's best to just find one of these articles as opposed to going to like Google Scholar and finding a book or something. It's not going to be in a book. So sciencenews.org sounds pretty legit to me because it's a .org and I don't know, it has science in the website. Um, so I would read this article and see if I can find any good quotes or something. Um, typically I would compile all of my information either in a Word document or I would just have a million of these um, tabs open at the top. And it's most likely that that's what I'll end up doing. Basically though, I would read this. So if I were to be doing, I guess, a research paper on this, like discussing the significance of this event, um, I would start with probably some background information. So there's definitely some good quotes in this that I would include as related to the picture itself. Um, just because, I don't know, it's talking about the scientist's view on it and how it's such a big deal. But then I also just need like basic background info on black holes in general. So this is a moment where I would probably go to, I feel like I didn't even spell scholar right, google.com, to Google Scholar, and I would look for black holes. So we definitely want a recent, I guess, article, but I don't know, Stephen Hawking, he's pretty credible. So, hmm.
so I feel like even though this is a super old source, like, it's Stephen Hawking. I can't not look at this information when I'm talking about this, you know? I feel like he had such a big role to play in pop culture and research and blah, blah, blah. Obviously, a lot of this information is going to be super over my head because I'm not a scientist. <laughs> but... Hmm. So I'm not going to use that source. One, because there's a lot of facts and figures that I can't necessarily comprehend. And two, because, again, it's an older source. Mm, I like that with Google. I can do a custom range. So I feel like I want to do, like, 2000, mm, 2010. That way it's, like, at least in the last decade. So I'd find articles like this. It's that's the thing too. Sometimes like I only have the abstract of an article that's offered and it's kind of annoying because You can't have the whole thing. But I've never been afraid to still just use the abstract of it. Like, I don't know if that's okay, but that's what I do. Oh my gosh, and there's always a million references here. So I would read through this. I want to show you my full process, and I'm using up so much time, so I'm not going to like read the whole article. I just want to show, I guess, the process of finding research. Um... Another thing, too... Oh, wait, I'm not supposed to divulge the school that I go to. So I do know that my school has, like, online library resources. I don't want to show that because apparently that would, like, void the study. But I will go back here, and I think I need to be a little more specific with my search term. Um... Also, while Google Scholar is super helpful for finding, like, I guess, peer-reviewed articles, sometimes I do just want to find a basic article. So, black holes explained. That sounds good. Probably not going to use NBC News. I do love videos. Oh, National Geographic. What is a black hole? This is perfect. So, National Geographic is obviously a well-known source, so I am not afraid to use that. Um, da -da -da -da. So I definitely like this article because it's going into the basics, and I feel like that is what I need um, if I were to write a paper on the basics of black hole and also the significance of the article. Um, I really like this article because it's written also in kind of layman's terms, like it's not going over my head like that art other article was. So I would not be afraid to use this. Um, Even, like, looking at these renderings. 
So basically that's what I'd be doing. I'd be searching for articles like this. Um, I'd compile information on the basics of my topic and then my actual topic, which would be the significance of this photo that was just taken. Um, yeah, that's basically it. I don't know how helpful everything was. Um, I will lastly, I guess, just include the um, other thing that I use. So whatever college you go to, you can typically find have a live online library source, which is awesome. Um, I honestly don't ever go to like our actual school library and get books because it's 2019 and I don't need to. <laughs> so really I could just use this and search for black holes. I can search for different articles. Um, and what's nice with this is that I can choose do I just want peer-reviewed articles? Do I want things from news, from magazines? Um, I like academic journals a lot because... Because it usually brings, provides like a full picture, I guess, as to what I want to talk about. And it's pretty uh, reliable as a source. There's so much on this topic. I actually picked probably too broad of a topic to discuss. Hmm. Now this is nothing of what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, my time is almost up, but I feel like this kind of explained my research process. Um, helpful to use whatever school you go to. Just blur this out, I guess. <laughs> whatever school you go to is library online and find articles there. Um, I love finding articles that are explain things a little more simply like this, but that can still be known as credible. Um, and then, you know, finding recent news articles even, especially if it's from, like, science-related um, news sources. Um, and, yeah, I typically have, like, all of these tabs open and go back and forth. Um, if I want to pull a direct quote, then I have that website or that source open, and I can just go and, um, you know, put my source together. Uh, obviously, I don't want to just, like, copy and paste things, but if I am taking a direct quote, I can copy that quote, or um, just even just read the article to understand what I want to write about it. So, that's the basics of what I do, and I'm going to stop my video now.